and uh, welcome to a brand new episode of Market Month and powered by ZBiz.com. Well, my name is Shweta Chanand and today we have a very special guest with us, uh, Sridhi Bhattacharya, who is the CEO and CIO Equities at Edelweiss AMC. Well, welcome to the show, Sridhi. Uh, wish, wish you and your uh, viewers a very happy new year and thanks for having me on the show. Thank you, Sridhi, for your kind words and I'm sure, you know, our... Uh, the viewers would want to know after, you know, 20% kind of a jump that we have seen in Indian markets uh, for the year 2021, what is in store for us in the year 2022? Absolutely. I think great question to start, uh, to kick off the, uh, the interview. I would say while 2021 has been a stellar year, we think uh, uh, 2022 uh, is likely to be uh, the first year of policy normalization post-pandemic. Right. Uh, and hence, we would expect uh, 2022 to be a tale of two halves, actually. Uh, in the first half, I would expect markets to digest the pace of policy normalization, along with Omicron issue, and hence would expect it to be fairly volatile. In the second half, though, I would expect markets to respond to earnings direction and as the uh, economic recovery unfolds. unfolds. So on net balance, we are constructive on equities in 2022, but uh, be prepared for a higher volatility uh, uh, coming ahead. Well, I'm no doubt about that. I'm sure uh, it'll be a volatile year as we've seen back to back, uh, you know, double digit gains on the benchmark indices in the year 2020, as well as in the year 2021. Now, uh, usually, uh, whenever we enter a fresh new year, the big event to watch out for is usually the budget or the upcoming budget 2022. So what are your expectations from the finance minister from industry or investor perspective? Sure. Uh, so if I were to summarize the industry expectations first, I would say uh, in the pre-budget memorandum uh, of 2023, the industry, uh, the CII um, uh, expected the government or expects the government to hasten the disinvestment process, uh, uh, particularly in identified public sector units uh, like LIC, BPCL and Shipping Corporation of India, and to use the proceeds for social and physical infrastructure. Similarly, in healthcare sector, CII expects uh, uh, the government to raise the public investment to at least 2.5 to 3% of GDP from 1.2% uh, currently. Incorporating the same and acknowledging the fact that there will be election uh, uh, due in several states over the sure. next few months, I think the focus of the union budget for 2023 are likely to be job creation, infrastructure sector, farmer softs, and rural softs. Uh, we watch the headlines closely, but at the moment, that's how, that's how my thoughts are. Well, I'm sure you're right about that as well. Uh, so which sectors are likely to get some limelight uh, in this new year? Yeah. So uh, I think that's a moot question, isn't it? Uh, based <laughs> on our analysis of the uh, CapEx intentions of the Indian corporate sector, um, combined with the decade low interest rates, actually, we feel India could actually witness a strong CapEx cycle over the next two to three years. Something which we haven't seen since the demonetization times about you know, two to three years ago. Uh, also, the structural reforms that the Indian government has led over the last two to three years could potentially increase India's GDP growth by a percentage or two. Uh, we, we look for stock ideas across the sectors which are direct or indirect plays on the team. But if I put all of these together, I would yeah. say that the economy facing sectors like financials, industrials, and in, indirect plays on real estate uh, are fertile hunting grounds for us. On the other hand, the stock, uh, the sectors which are probably not that favorite are staples, utilities, etc. Uh, uh, that's how we, we we think the new year might actually uh, uh, turn out to be. Right. And if you talk about market valuations, Radeep, uh, you know, when compared with other emerging markets, uh, how are FIs looking at Indian markets right now? Although you know they might have pulled out some money from the cash market uh, in the year 2021, uh, but they remain to be net buyers uh, for the year. Uh, 2021 from uh, in totality, including the debt and the uh, equity cash flows, as well as there have been big buyers in the primary markets as well. So what is the trend that is likely to pan out uh, for the year 2022? Yeah, great question. Uh, but just to set the context right, Indian markets, along with France and United States, actually outperform the global markets meaningfully in 2021. Mm -hmm. Then so much so that the Nifty index was up about 22.4% in dollar terms in 2021, which is quite uh, stark as compared to some of the other regional EMs, uh, mm -hmm. which were down uh, in double digits. Um, so uh, in that context, if I sold about $7 billion, just to put the data in 2021, 
whereas sure. DII is bought close to about 12 billion. Mm -hmm. So driven by, if I look at this data, driven by the regional outperformance, I would say that the India's weightage in various global indices has gone up meaningfully over the last one year. And based on this, I would say that the FIIs are probably uh, structurally positive on India and for probably partially booking profits given the sharp outperformance that we've seen in later parts of 2021. On valuation front, to answer your question on that side, uh, I would say that, again, driven by the strong outperformance in 2021, the mm -hmm. valuations of Indian listed peers are probably slightly on the higher side as compared to the regional counterparts. Okay. However, this has to be calibrated against the prospects of a small, uh, of a strong economic cycle in India, which can't be ignored. Right. And, you know, we've been talking about uh, FIs, how they've been net buyers in the primary market space. And, uh, uh, you know, we... It, you know, with you in picture, we can't afford to lose out on getting your opinion on uh, how the primary market looks uh, in the year 2022 as well. So what is the kind of fundraising you, you know, foresee for the next year? We've seen more than a lakh uh, crore that, uh, uh, you know, the kind of money that were raised from primary markets uh, in 2021. Any top companies that you are watching out for as well? <laughs> uh, uh, I would say that, I mean, just to again uh, uh, set the context right, the Indian markets actually saw record fundraise of uh, US dollar 30 billion uh, in FI22. Um, as apart from normal bread and butter companies, quite a few uh, unicorns headed to the public markets, and we will see how that situation evolved. Um, and if I look at the, uh, uh, the pipeline, according to Jefferies, which is one of the investment houses, they say that uh, in FI23, um, the pipeline looks as robust as it was in FI22. So for okay. all practical purposes, according to one of the investment banks, uh, FI23 could turn out to be uh, as, uh, 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 as strong in terms of pipeline of equity raises as we've seen in FI22 uh, overall. Uh, I think the companies that we always look for are uh, you know, successful franchises, which have been uh, in the unlisted space, are uh, entering the uh, listed space and, uh, you know, could be potential wealth creators over a period of time, companies with strong pricing power, uh, right. uh, companies which are either market share gainers. And our, our lens of looking through the companies remains the same. And okay. we'll uh, keep eyes and ears on to find if any of them uh, find its way to the listed markets. Well, I'm sure it will be an action-packed year again for the primary markets as well. Well, also, uh, we've been, we, we talked about uh, rise in COVID cases recently and how, uh, you know, that could impact markets as well. Although when we saw the Delta variant coming in, we saw a knee-jerk reaction and then markets sort of just lifted from that, uh, uh, from that ground to hit fresh record highs. Now, uh, although we are all, we are already sitting on double digit gains and uh, as and when things do rise or do come up, we're already seeing some bit of restrictions uh, in various parts of the country. Do you think that there could be uh, some bit of impact on the March quarter earnings for the India Inc. as well? Sure. I think uh, while we need to watch this Omicron situation closely, uh, and it can uh, clearly get a high hand, uh, but this is a global phenomenon and not just an India phenomenon. And if I look at the precedents like US and European markets, where which have seen spikes in Omicron uh, cases over the last few months, mm -hmm. uh, the stock markets have actually seen a mild correction rather than an equity market crash. So I would surmise that given, the, given that the equity markets have successfully digested wave one and wave two successfully, I would think that corona, the, uh, the Omicron variant led wave three can probably dampen the mood in the short term, but unlikely to alter the direction of the equity markets uh, in a year's time. Uh, March quarter earnings may be in pockets uh, that can be impacted, but I would still see those weaknesses as buying opportunities rather than being scared about uh, uh, over the medium term. Right. Well, Omicron unlikely to alter the direction of markets. That's the word coming from today. And, uh, uh, you know, lastly, any five success mantras for investors which you want to share as a New Year gift to our viewers? <laughs> um, sure, I would try my best. I, uh, and I, in that context, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, uh, a few uh, timeless themes, in my opinion, uh, uh, which uh, could actually serve investors good, not just uh, in this year, which is 2022, but also maybe in the next two to three years are, uh, uh, would be my uh, uh, sort of uh, best guess. Uh, and you can call it a gift to your viewers. Uh, first of all, I would talk about uh, the private consumption demand related place. 
And I think uh, over the last two or three years, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people have not held social occasions, uh, uh, you know, and maybe for a few months more given Omicron. Uh, but there will come a time probably in the second half of this year where we'll digest all this and you will see, you know, social activities rising. And during those times, private consumption demand as a theme could be one strong theme to play out for. Okay. The second, I think, as I highlighted earlier, given that we are positive on the economic cycle, we think the private sector investment demand uh, could be another theme to, uh, uh, to play, uh, particularly from, a, uh, from an investor standpoint. The third uh, is basically the government scheme beneficiaries. For the first time in a while, we have seen certain structural uh, reforms made by the government, which I think could potentially alter the shape of manufacturing in India over the next 10 years. And certainly there are certain plays on these names which could be uh, buying, uh, worth buying and holding on to over the medium term. Um, the fourth I would highlight is my one of my long-term favorite is basically companies with pricing power. I think given that we have seen inflation uh, 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 and uh, sometimes high, sometimes low, times effortlessly uh, maintaining their margins as well as growth. So uh, that's the fourth. Uh, theme that I would say. And finally, I would point to China plus one beneficiaries. Right. Given that China is vacating some of the spaces uh, amongst the listed companies in India, uh, there could be some companies which could benefit from the same. And that, that could certainly be a medium term play uh, and should form part of the investor's portfolio uh, who is looking at making wealth, uh, uh, creating wealth over the medium term. Right. Well, interesting themes there, uh, Sudeep, and I'm sure our viewers will take that into account for generating wealth in the long term. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Sudeep, for your insight on markets. And yes, we are running out of time. So that's all for now. But do stay log on to zbiz.com for more on news, business and economy. Again, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks, Shirid. Uh, and to your viewers, happy investing.